single point. Welcome in. Hey guys, we're gonna get up on our feet. We're gonna put our hands together and listen to songs of praise to the Lord. Come on, let's sing it out. There are walls between us. By the cross you came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us. By grace we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. See, feel the darkness. Feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life, back to life. Hear the song awaken, all creation singing, we're alive, cause you're alive. You called me out of the grave, you called me into the light, you called my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Oh, what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We'll shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive And what a love we found, death can't hold us down We'll shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive And what a love we found, death can't hold us down We'll shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive Your love is great your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me Your love is greater love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. It's Jesus, your love awakens me. Oh, oh. Yes, Father, we praise your name, Lord. search the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough then you came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm 
not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Your mercy and grace won't find me again. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Nothing is better than you You turn morning to dancing You get beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory you're the only one who cares. Sing that again. You turn. You turn morning to dancing. You get beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn graves. You turn graves into gardens. God, you see beyond that, Lord. You see who we truly are, who you have created us to be, and the potential of this full life, this full joy, this abundant grace that we are capable of, Lord. But Father, it is impossible to have those things without you, Lord. And so, Lord, we turn to you. We turn to your word, which speaks life and wisdom over us. We turn to your presence, which gives us peace and rest and joy. Lord, we turn to you as our source and our fortress and our joy, Lord God. So, Father, 
Father, and that is why we sing. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. And worthy of every praise we could ever bring. And worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Only there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me worthy every song we could ever sing and worthy of all the praise we could ever bring and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes. In wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and feed me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Sing holy, it's holy, there 
is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me. Bring me up to those around. our lives in your hands, Lord God, because of this great trust that we have in you, that you are far more capable, Lord, of making something amazing happen with what little we have, Lord God. Father, we entrust unto you everything, knowing that you are our firm foundation. You are the one who has made us new, Lord God, and you are the one who is capable, Father of taking us further and farther and greater than we could have ever asked or imagined, Lord God. God, we celebrate because you are doing great things here in this community, and we celebrate, Lord God, because in our own lives, though we may not feel it, though in the moment it may feel difficult or challenging or hard, Lord God, we know that every experience that you are allowing us to encounter brings us closer to you into a greater place of victory, into an identity of, of a child in your kingdom, of a warrior in your army. Yes, Lord, we praise you because of what you've done and because of who you are, God. It's in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Can we give the Lord a cry of praise today? Can we just celebrate Jesus this morning? Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. We are so excited to see you. For those of you on the live stream, welcome. Your presence is welcome here. Feel free to say hello and leave comments in the chat. Guys, we are so excited for this service. We're excited for this Sunday because so many great things are going on. Um, so as, as we continue with service, you guys go ahead and, and watch these announcements. Go ahead and have a seat. Hey, guys. Welcome to Eagle Point Church. We are honored that you guys have decided to join us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Just a few quick announcements before we continue on with the service. As of June 6th, we will now be streaming our services, our Sunday services, on Facebook. We've been using YouTube. We have decided that Facebook is the best way to continue on with our online services. So if you've been watching on YouTube, simply go to Eagle Point People on Facebook. It will be so easy. A monkey could do it. We're streaming. That is starting on June 6th. Also, the next round of Next Steps is also starting up soon, so you will definitely want to get signed up to that if you're new or if you want to get signed up for a small group or a ministry, that is the way to do it. And lastly, the uh, Men's Conference Promise Keepers is coming up on July 16th through the 17th. That's a Friday night up until uh, Saturday about 2.30 in the afternoon. It is going to be an amazing time. We would love to take a big group of guys, every guy in the church, we would love to have you. Uh, it's $75 in total. You can pay uh, through text or you can pay online. There's a drop down menu for men's events. And we have some amazing men who have actually offered scholarships to where uh, if price is an issue, it, we, it doesn't have to be. We do have some scholarships available. If, uh, if you're a guy and you're wanting to attend, just fill out a connection card and simply write PK Scholarship, and we can get you signed up for that. If you're going, the last deadline to sign up and pay is uh, June 20th, so definitely get those in before then. Let's say you're interested in what I have to say, 
or what I have said. Let's say you're interested in promise keepers or next steps. Maybe you were confused that we're moving streaming services to Facebook. Where do you go? Let me tell you where you go. You can head to eaglepoint.church slash connection card. That is the best way if you need information, if you would like to give us information, or anything else that you can think of, that's the way to do it. It's so easy. You can head there for all of your Eagle Point needs. With all that being said, let's head into the Word. Good morning, Eagle Point. We hate that we're not with you guys today, but we are down in the town of Montgomery, Texas, north of the Houston area, celebrating and preparing for our son Dawson's wedding. And we've been celebrating all weekend and can't wait to see them tie the knot and be a part of that huge moment in our family's history. But today, you guys are blessed because you have one of my very close friends that I've known uh, many years now since Bible college day. He was a part of our wedding. He was one of my groomsmen and he's no stranger to Eagle Point. He has been here uh, every year for over a decade and Ron Rhodes is celebrating a special milestone. Just a few weeks ago, he celebrated 25 years as a full-time evangelist and he has traveled to over 36 states in the U.S. and over 36 countries around the world speaking preaching the gospel, doing missions work. And what's incredible too, I don't even want to think about this many miles being logged or this many hours in the air, but he has now logged over two and a half million miles traveling to bring people the good news of Jesus. And on top of all that, on top of his speaking and speaking at camps and conferences and doing revivals and speaking at churches, he has done, he has hosted over 43 different soccer salvation camps that is literally seeing countless lives come to Christ and people connected to a local church and seeing incredible move of, moves of God happen in nations across the globe. And so can we give a huge and an awesome honor-filled welcome to Ron Rhodes as he comes to preach the word today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Richard. We uh, are so excited for their family today and what a truly special moment that is. And uh, may we always pray for people that are getting married. How many knows that those that are married need prayer, right? And uh, it doesn't stop uh, because you've been married for a certain amount of years, right? In fact, the longer you're married, the more prayer you probably need. Uh, praise God. My wife and I just uh, celebrated 14 years of uh, marriage, and, and God is so faithful. It is so good to be back here at Eagle Point, and uh, uh, somebody reminded me before service that uh, uh, they recently saw a picture of me, uh, and you guys were praying for uh, me and my wife and uh, our, uh, our foster-to-adopt daughter that in a few months is going to be officially our daughter. Uh, we, we, yes, thank you. It's uh, funny that uh, I started traveling back by plane in May of last year uh, after being only down uh, from the pandemic and quarantine uh, from uh, the middle of March to about the end of May. And I went almost an entire year without getting COVID, traveling and being in hotels and airports and and literally being in uh, so many services and praying for people in the altar went nearly an entire year without getting COVID but you know what it just was it was just destined to to happen I guess that I was going to get COVID at some point and uh, but praise be to God uh, even when I shared it with my wife and uh, our little girl uh, we were able to get past that and we are doing great and I know Eagle Point prayed for us, so thank you very, very much. It did get quite serious for me. At one point, I did get the COVID pneumonia. I was on the verge of being uh, put in the hospital, uh, but that is, uh, it just sounds like a scary place since COVID to be put in the hospital. I've been in the hospital a lot over my life, uh, but it was literally one of those moments that I was like, uh, I don't want to go to the hospital. I think I can do better out of the hospital 
Uh, my pulse ox I saw in the ER, uh, the lowest it got was around 86. Uh, usually at 89, they admit you, but uh, God is so good and so faithful. So thank you for praying for Heather and I, and uh, we just praise God for that. Also, the last time I spoke here was uh, a year ago via video, right? Uh, during the pandemic. Uh, uh, so uh, it's been a couple of years since it was here in person and so good to be here. And I, I just thank like, Pastor Richard uh, for inviting us to be here today. And uh, it is uh, so good to see you. And we are anticipating God and, and what he's going to do today and I'm really excited about what God's going to do. And let me just give you some encouragement because God is just, how many knows that it, it, even if you don't know anything about end times and prophecies and all these things and, and all that freaks you out, how many knows that what we're seeing take place in Israel right now, uh, you realize that Israel is in the news, right? They're, they're being bombed by Hamas, uh, a terrorist uh, organization, and you are seeing anti-Semitism rise in a crazy way. Well, let me tell you, uh, Israel is sacred. It is God's people. It is God's nation, and he will do what it takes to protect them. Uh, but this is the thing you need to understand. We are in the last days. These are just another confirmation that we are in the last days. And so God is just, uh, as, as Pastor Richard just mentioned, uh, that in March, uh, uh, just completely uh, blows me away of the faithfulness of God. Because let me assure you, uh, when, when I hit the 25-year mark of being a full-time evangelist, that has absolutely nothing to do with Ron Rhodes. I wouldn't have made it five days, okay? Uh, it has everything to do with God's faithfulness, and that's the only way we made it 25 years going all over the world and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, but what God has been speaking to me, because uh, last uh, weekend was my first time back uh, after having COVID, and I was down for six months and God just began to speak to me. He says, he says uh, I, I, want you, uh, I want you to open yourself up for, to allow me to renew the calling of the gifting of the evangelist upon you. Because like never before do we need to see people saved. We need to see people saved because God is coming very, very soon. And last week, uh, after God had been speaking to the, that into my heart for the last six weeks, uh, last week on a Sunday morning, uh, just like this, we, we had, I think it was at least 10 up to 12, around 10 to 12 people respond on a Sunday morning for salvation. The pastor emailed me or texted me this week and says, today, this Sunday, one week later, right now, uh, they are going to have water baptism. And nine people are getting water baptized this morning as a result of last Sunday. I'm getting goosebumps on up here I don't know if it's the air conditioner or the Holy Spirit or what, but I'll take it either way. It feels good when you have goosebumps in church, right? Because that's usually about God doing some things. And so wouldn't it be great that Pastor Richard would have to come back next week and do a water baptism because so many people get saved today and uh, believing for healings and, and transformations. And so just open up your heart. If you would like to find out more about our ministry, some of you may be familiar with us, some of you may not be, but we have a website. It's just ronroads.org, and you can also find us on Facebook. And we love to hear what God is doing in people's lives and uh, testimony. So if God does something in your life today, please send us a message, and we'd love to celebrate with you. As well, Pastor Richard mentioned about our soccer salvation camps. Can you guys pray with me about something? This is uh, heavy up on my heart. Since COVID started, uh, it means uh, countries all over the world are, are, are completely not an option. Uh, me and other international evangelists have been talking, really wondering what international ministry will look like for a long time. Because as you can imagine, we are the country that has the premier medical abilities, research, vaccinations. We have premier medical facilities, and we have uh, money unlike any other country in the world. So can you imagine what third world countries are going through right now with COVID? It is very, very bad. And they are not allowing anybody that is an outsider, that is not a uh, 
someone that is a citizen of that country to come. I cannot come to all these countries that are desperately needing revival. And so would you pray that God would begin to do some supernatural miracles and God would begin to open doors because most situations would require me once I got there to quarantine for 10 to 14 days and then I would have to do the same coming back. So we're talking about an entire month for just one event that I would not be doing anything but sitting in a hotel someplace. And so we know that God is able to do that. We've done 43 soccer salvation camps and crusades around the globe. And God has us so many more places that he wants to do this. And so thank you for praying with us this morning. I want you to stand with me for the word of God, if you would please, and turn with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Now, I know, because I was in uh, North Texas last weekend, and I drove through the torrential downpour on Sunday afternoon, flooding. I know you guys have had a lot of rain and clouds this week. Just a little reminder from someone that lived here 28 years, you will appreciate this and be wanting this week sometime in the middle of July and August. So just, just savor it, okay? Don't think it's a bad thing, right? I heard someone say this week, I've never seen Texas so green because uh, of all of this rain, but uh, it's, a, it's a good thing, and these temperatures are really good, amen? I live in Pennsylvania now, and this week, no joke, we were in the 90s, and you guys were in the 70s. That's just wrong, okay? Something flipped there, okay? It should be the other way around. So it is good to be here. Luke chapter 5, I want to begin reading in verse 17, if you found it. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. It says, one day as he was teaching, I was talking about Jesus, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this, because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven Lord, I pray for these next few moments. There would literally be a powerful presence of the Holy Spirit in this room. God, I pray, Lord, that today, Lord, you know every situation. And God, you know, Lord, what those people that have walked in this service are going through and what they will go through this week. So God, you're the only one that knows what we need. So I pray over these next few moments that the word of God that is alive and powerful and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you will speak into our lives and we will literally be transformed and become more like you. Lord, for those that may not have a relationship with you, God, I pray right now, whether they are watching online or whether they are sitting here right now in this room, I pray that before they leave this room, they will experience the forgiveness and love of Jesus Christ. God, in a day and age in which there is so much chaos, Lord, we, we know, Lord, that there are so many unanswered questions today. But God, there is one thing that we can wake up and know every day, and that is a foundation of truth that, Lord, you are still in control. And God, I thank you for this chance this morning, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, I, this, this may be... This may sound a little harsh or something for some of you, but let me explain what I mean. How many knows that just because someone's sick or has a disease or has been injured, how many knows that that does not guarantee God healing them? Disease and sickness does not guarantee healing. How many knows that poverty, people that are in poverty or in financial need, how many knows that that does not necessarily mean that God is going to send provision just because they're poor? 
if those two things were true, if, if they were, if it was based upon need, in other words, if it was based upon people being sick or injured, or if it was based upon financial need in their life, then how many knows there would be billions of miracles every day, right? But it's not based upon that. In fact, I would like to put it like this. It may not be your right, but it's your promise. It may not be your right to be healed, but it's your promise from God, your creator. It may not be your right to be wealthy or financially provided for, but it is your promise. You see, we can look at the scripture and we can find promise after promise. And the great thing about this story that I just read to you is, is that these four friends decided, you know what? Our friend has been laying there. He's been paralyzed forever. He does not know what it's like to walk. And they didn't have you know, wheelchairs back then. They didn't have, uh, you know, the government requiring everybody to have wheelchair access and, and bathrooms that would accommodate those that were, were, were severely affected. And, and so here is this guy that has spent most of his life just laying there, laying there, wasting away, not able to work, not able to go, not able to do all the things that people could always do. So in other words, it was not his right to be healed, Right? But it was the promise, it was his promise that he could be healed. But it came down to four important people in his life. Because you know what? One day, four friends got up and said, you know what? Our friend is no longer going to be a cripple if we have anything to do about it. Because we're going to get our friend in front of Jesus. Can I tell you this morning, church, our responsibility is to get people in front of Jesus. You see, that's your responsibility. And that's where it begins, and that's where it ends. See, some of us feel like we got to do it all. But all you're required to do is get them in front of Jesus. And then Jesus will do the rest. He'll save them. He'll deliver them. He will heal them. He will restore them. He will give them joy. He will take away suicidal tendencies. He will take away insecurities. He will take away depression. It is not their right, but it is their promise. Come on, church, in these last days, in a, in a, in a time in which for the last year we have, been, we have been set apart. We have been told to stay away from each other. We have been told to quarantine. We have been told to st stick a mask on our face so you can't see that I'm smiling at you and I want to encourage you and I have something positive to say to you to you. We have been told uh, that, that disease is, is the reason to stay away socially distance. Well, how many knows that you may social distance, but let's not God distance people because of the condition that our world is in. We must do what these four friends did. And you know what God spoke to me in the last six weeks? He says, Ron, enough of the excuses. Can I tell you something about ministers? God preaches the message to us before we preach it to you. And can I tell you that God does not make it nice and smooth and easy to accept? He does not make sure that uh, he doesn't offend me or say something controversial. He gets in my face and says, okay, enough with the excuses. Enough with using COVID as the excuse. Enough with using this as an excuse. No, you don't have to be perfect. You see, there is no perfect person. There is no one. You see, there would be no one qualified to step in a pulpit and preach the word of God if it was based upon us being perfect and without never sinning. That means nobody would be able to stand up here. But what God has said is, get your friends and your family in front of me. And you know what? Here are four friends, and, 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 and this was not easy. They didn't have like a, a, a nice, you know, handicap accessible van that they could wheel him up in his wheelchair and drive him across town. These four guys had to carry their friend out of his house all the way to this other place where Jesus was. But wherever Jesus went, he was so popular that huge crowds pressed in. And can you imagine the excuse that they had when they got to the service? Well, we tried. I mean, literally, it was so packed. 
It was so packed inside that it became packed outside. I mean, they, it, it wasn't even a matter of getting in the house. They couldn't even get close to the house. Can I tell you that you will have plenty of excuses why not to invite your friends and family to the house of God? You will have plenty of excuses why not to reach out to them and witness to them. You will have plenty of excuses why not to get involved in their life. Remember, church, it's not their right, but it is their promise that God wants to save them. He wants to heal them. He wants to deliver them. These guys says, no, 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 no. You have lived as a, a, a paralyzed man long enough. Come on, church. Your mom has been an alcoholic for decades now, and it ends today because you say, I'm going to determine to get my mom in front of Jesus. If it's praying every day and interceding and calling out her name, come on, your husband has had the last suicidal thought. Come on, your child is running from God in a homosexual relationship for the last day because you're going to get them in front of Jesus. And getting them in front of Jesus is not condemning them and judging them and banging the Bible upside their head and telling them how bad of a person they are. No, those four friends didn't walk around through town holding their friend as they were carrying him on his mat, saying, watch out, paralyzed man, coming through. Step back, step back. Please, no one get close. Paralyzed man, coming through. No. No need to judge someone or harshly criticize them or tell the world what they're going through. A week ago, my wife and I were driving in the car and we heard this on the radio. That there was, in the area that we live in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, 911 was called by some neighbors because one day they looked up and because they could hear some kids crying and screaming. And they looked up in a third story window there was a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. This happened literally like nine days ago. A five-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. And they were in a window, third-story window of a home, and they were screaming and crying out this window for help. And what they were doing is they were calling for their parents. Now, why would they, these three little kids, these three little babies, be at a third-story window with it open, crying for their parents? Well, the reason why it was on the news and the reason why someone had to call 911 is because their parents had locked those three babies up in a room and had restrained them. And the reason was, and they locked the door, the reason was they wanted to go to a monster truck rally. So when the police got to this house and they got into this room, they said, this is their description. And, and you know, the police see a lot, a lot of bad things. But even the police said they were deplorable conditions. These kids had been locked in this room and been restrained. And the reason is, is, is on that day is their parents were at a monster truck route. Well, obviously, the parents are in jail right now, and, and, and the three kids have been put into foster care, and, 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 and we're hearing an un, another unbelievable story, but there was something that, that really stood out to me about this story is, is because the neighbors said what the children, what they were saying, what they were screaming, who they were screaming for was their parents, the people that had caused them incredible pain and sorrow because you know what they didn't know anyone else they didn't know to call for anyone else can i i can't give you a better illustration of why the people in the world that are friends and our family that do not have jesus christ i can't give you a better illustration than what it's like for them not to know jesus christ and we look at them and we say, why in the world would you keep going back to the drugs? 
Why would you keep going back to the pornography? Why would you keep going back to the alcohol? Why would you keep going back to the suicidal thoughts and the insecurities and the depression? Why do you keep going back to the very thing that has you restrained? The very thing that has isolated you? The very thing that has caused you fear and pain? Because they don't know any better. And that's why. Can you imagine right now all of a sudden dust begins to come down from the top of the ceiling? It doesn't matter what I'm preaching what I'm doing, I could stand up here and start doing, you know, jumping jacks. I would not get your attention if all of a sudden there was stuff coming down on your head and the ceiling right over you because your focus would be right back up there. You wouldn't be looking at me anymore. You'd be looking up there. And you imagine this is exactly what happened. Those four guys says, uh-uh, no more excuses. Nope, nope, not going to use any more excuses. Nope, our friend is going to get in front of Jesus. That's all that we have control of, but we're getting our friend in front of Jesus. And, and they said, you know what? We will carry him up on a roof. And can you imagine? He's just laying on a mat. I mean, there's not a lot of security in that. And I'm sure he's like saying, hey, put me down, guys. I'm already paralyzed. I don't want to die. I mean, what are you trying to do, kill me? And you know what? There will be some pushback by the people that you love and you care about. But trust me, the moment that they are lowered into in front of Jesus and they feel the love and the acceptance and the forgiveness of Christ, then come on, church, it will be the most glorious moment of their life. We have got to get people in front of Jesus because it is at that moment that God begins to do something so powerful something that will literally change their future and when Jesus saw this man being lowered that was paralyzed do you know what he didn't do he didn't say how dare you interrupt the service so that ministry could take place How dare you tear up the roof? Who do you think you are? Look at all these important people that I'm speaking to. The response of the church, the religious people was, they were emphatic and they were mad. They even got mad at Jesus because he, how he decided to heal this man because you understand that true healing starts with forgiveness and salvation. Jesus said the very first thing. He saw that he was paralyzed. He knew he was paralyzed. But he understood he was paralyzed way more spiritually than he was physically. Church, may we not use the excuse of what's around us. Most of you know that um, uh, if you've heard me over the last couple of years, in January of 2019, my wife and I started on a journey of trying uh, to foster to adopt. Uh, my, my wife and I, uh, after 14 years of marriage, uh, the last 12 years, we started trying to have a child. Uh, my, I have a 23-year-old daughter, uh, but uh, my wife uh, has never had a child to call her mom. And so we decided to start trying to have a child. And... After five miscarriages, we realized that that was probably a closed door to have a child the normal physical way. And then we started thinking about adoption. And because we do international children's ministries, we also thought that that was just the natural. We've often won, we've often thought about it. I mean, we deal with the, the poorest of the poor, the, the sickest of the sickest. Uh, we go into places that nobody else has even went in. Their own governments don't even come into there because it's so remote. And, and we went into all these places. No joke, literally one time, I think it was in the country of Brazil, a, a mother comes up to us in the middle of a soccer salvation camp and, and some of her kids were in the camp and crusade. And, and she has, I don't know how many kids, she had a lot of kids. And, and right in front of her, I believe he was eight or nine years old, so very capable of understanding what was going on and what his mother said. Right there, standing in front of him, she offers us her son just to, here, take him. He, he can be yours. You can take him back to the to U.S. Now, I won't hold any parents. To, 
asking you if there's moments with your children that you're just like, man, I'd really like to send you to somebody else's house, maybe in another country far, far away. No, parents, you don't have to raise your hand on this. We knocked on some international doors to try to have an international adoption, but God closed that door as well. Then we tried a private adoption here in America. Can I tell you one of the tragedies in America? This, this, this incredible, amazing country that we are in. It is a travesty that when there are so many families that want to have children that have never been able to have children, it is a travesty that it costs forty to $50,000 to adopt a child in America. And let me tell you, it is against the law for any of that to go to the mother that has the child physically. You cannot pay for a baby. It is the system. So we quickly found out that that was a closed door. And so we started the process two and a half years ago to foster, to adopt, and we've had several children in our home. It was nine months ago that this little 16-month-old girl came into our home. Parents, do you remember the day that your child was born and you were like, how's this going to work? This, just, this child is just going to show up and I'm just going to love them? I'm just going to want to protect them? Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? I know what that's like. My wife doesn't. It's not been easy. But nine months ago, we got this beautiful little girl in our home. And the greatest thing, the greatest thing about us having her in our home is the fact that We get to put her in front of Jesus every day for the rest of her life. Because it's not fair with what happens with people. It's not fair with what happens when tragedy strikes your home. It's not fair. Our little girl, she was born in prison reason she was born in prison because her bio mom had with a different bio father than her bio father she had triplets with another guy and they decided this is all in the local news where this happened and so it's not private information it was in all the news her bio mom and this other guy were doing drugs. They were hooked on drugs, and they decided one day, maybe this went on many times, that they had these triplets. And so in order to be able to do the drugs, but in their drug-induced stupor, they decided that, oh, well, we want to be smart about this, and we want to make sure that our children don't get hurt, so we're going to put them in their crib, and then we're going to put a mattress over the crib, and then we're going to put a 50-pound bag of salt on top of the mattress so they can't get out. And one day, tragedy struck, and there was two little girls and one little boy in the triplets, and one day they would find their little boy dead because he had had all of that stuff fall down on him and suffocate and kill him. So before she went to prison, she got pregnant with another guy. And that's the reason why our little girl was born in prison. She was with her bio mom for one hour and taken away and sent home with her sister and her sister's boyfriend. Three months later, a three-month-old baby girl was one day brought to the ER 
And the reason why the boyfriend had squeezed, had done something so aggressive and mean out of anger or frustration or whatever the motivation was to a three-month-old baby so that it broke ten of her ribs. And one of the hardest things as we've been walking through this process to foster, to adopt this beautiful little girl is knowing that the day and the time that she hurt the most, mommy and daddy weren't there. One of the most difficult things to, to take a hold of is one day we will have a conversation with her and it will be one of the most difficult conversations of our life and that will be to sit her down and tell her why we have her and it will be painful and there will be no doubt lots of tears but the important thing about this man that was crippled it was because he was crippled that he got in front of Jesus and he got saved and healed and the same way with our little girl she went through incredible pain she went through incredible uh, difficult situation she will never be with her bio mom and bio father, but I am never going to look at all the things that she's been through that's been unfair as something that cannot produce joy and peace and happiness because it is the very fact that she went through that, that my wife and I get to have this. She's now two years old, over two years old. And there is nothing better. Tomorrow, I will fly home, and a few minutes before we get to the house, we will call ahead, and this little girl will be standing in the front window looking for Daddy to get out of the car. And it hit me one day, as difficult and painful and horrible of a story that she has, she will also have just as amazing and beautiful testimony. And without her pain and her sorrow, we would not have the chance to have her. But the thing about it is, church, the tragedy in the story is not what she's went through. The tragedy would be that if she never got to be in front of Jesus... And because a Christian family is adopting her and brought her into their home, and we will literally see her life change. It will have a different outcome because she will be in front of Jesus, whether she wants to or not, every day. Every day she gets to be in front of Jesus. And on top of that bonus material, her dad is an evangelist of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she will be in church and she will know and learn to love the Lord my God. And let me tell you, we pray for that day that one day she will be able to get her bio mom and bio dad in front of Jesus if, so, if she so chooses. If God would set that up, we will pray for the day that her grandmother, her bio grandmother, that is literally a witch in a coven and is bad, bad news. We will pray every day for her salvation as well. You see, God has not called us to condemn a person and look at their situation and say, oh, he's paralyzed. He's paralyzed by drugs. He's paralyzed by alcohol. He's paralyzed by, by, by horrible thoughts. He is paralyzed by by this or that no there is one responsibility for the body of Christ and that is to say no more excuses I'm getting my best friend in front of Jesus I'm getting my dad in front of Jesus I'm getting my mom in front of Jesus I'm getting my brother in front of Jesus I'm getting my co-worker in front of Jesus I'm getting my neighbor in front of Jesus and then Jesus will do what he does the most beautiful thing he will show them and give them all of his love and all of his forgiveness. I want you to stand with me if you would, please.
Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to stand before you. God, without us getting in front of you, there is no hope. Lord, well before you said, I tell you, get up and take your mat and go home to the paralyzed man. You spoke these words. Friend, your sins are forgiven. God, you sent a powerful message at that moment. That his physical condition of being paralyzed was not near as important to address as him being paralyzed by sin and unforgiveness. God, the healings will come. God, the healing will come because we were abused or neglected or rejected because we went through a disease or went through a horrible injury or went through something so unfair. That healing will come, but the priority is, the foundation must be the healing of our heart. Oh God, heal our heart. God, we have no idea when it will be our last time. And this could be our last time. God, may we not take this for granted. But may everyone realize that the most important thing that we can do is get our life in front of Jesus Christ and repent of our sins and accept him as our Lord and Savior. Right now with your heads bowed and as we close, I just want to quickly ask you a question. Are you here today? And it's very simple. You know you're not right with God. You know you're not living for God. You know that Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior. Let me clear up some confusion very quickly. You see, you know the truth, and, and more importantly, God knows the truth. He knows whether he is number one, and Jesus Christ has been invited into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And just like last week where we had at least 10, 12 people respond on a Sunday morning to receive Jesus Christ, there are no doubt someone's here today that God brought me here today to give you a message of hope that the whole message was about getting you in front of Jesus. Yes, I know you went through things that you didn't deserve. See, what you may not know is I was molested by a man in a church as a 10 year old no one knew for 11 years including my parents and my family see what you may not know is that as an 11 year old I was in a hospital in Muskogee, Oklahoma and in one split second I went from living to almost dying see what you may not know as a 33 year old I was diagnosed with cancer Four months later, I was told that it had spread into my lymphatic system and it had spread and it would head to my lungs and then to my brain. See, what you may not know is my daughter that is 23 year old today was born with a rare incurable disease, tumors throughout her brain and her heart and other organs of her body, dealing with an incurable disease her entire life. You see, we can have all the excuses in the, wo the world why life isn't fair. We can have all the excuses why we blame others, we blame God, we blame the world, we blame whoever. But you see, today, what you must realize is that it may not be your right, but it's your promise to come as you are to come as you are. You don't have to get things figured out. You don't have to have the answers. You don't have to get, get pure because you can't get pure. You just come 
It's Jesus. It's this man was lowered down literally in front of Jesus where Jesus could not go on and do anything else until he dealt with the paralyzed man laying in front of him in a huge hole in the middle of the roof. And one of the most powerful stories of that in all of the Bible was when that man was saved and set free from his sins and forgiven and accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Not only did he spiritually begin to walk that day, but he also physically began to walk because God raised him up and healed him. God wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to heal your heart that was rejected. He wants to heal your heart because you went through a divorce. He wants to heal you because you went through a rape. He wants to heal you because you had an abortion. He wants to heal you because you have a disease. He wants to heal you because you went through things that no one else knows. But that healing will come when you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Please, the only way that you make it to heaven is not whether you're good, not whether you go to church. It will be very simple. Are you covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? You must repent of your sins and accept him as your Lord and Savior. It is the only way you make it to heaven. It's the only way that any of us in this room have gotten saved as we did that moment in our life. We came to Jesus because someone got us in front of Jesus. Today you're in front of Jesus and he's standing here with open arms. He's not here to judge you or condemn you. He's not here to tell you all the things you've done wrong. He's simply here to say, welcome home, my son, my daughter. I love you. I accept you and I forgive you. And now I want to heal you. With every head bowed, this is a very private moment. I just want to simply ask everyone in this room, can I pray for you? Is there someone here today that you would say, Ron, you're talking to me. I know I need to get my life right with Jesus. I need to give my life to Jesus completely, 100% right now. I need to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If that's you, just raise your hand up really quickly just so I know who to pray for. You can put it right back down. I just want to pray for you right now. Please, please don't take a chance. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. If you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, just raise your hand and we'll pray for you. And then God will begin to do what he does. Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I pray for those that just raised their hand watching online. God, for that person that maybe feels so much guilt that the guilt is what keeps them from coming back to church. They're using COVID as the excuse, but the reality is, is that they feel the guilt. They feel the shame. The reality is, is, is church is filled with shameful, bad, sinful people. But the difference is, is when we accept Jesus Christ, Jesus wipes that all away, never to be held against us. Come on, join the family of God today. Those that are here in this room, if I didn't see you raised your hand, but you're saying right now I need to give my heart and life to Jesus, I want everyone right now, whether you're watching online, whether you're in this room right now, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Come on, church, say it with those that are accepting Christ right now. Come on, pray this prayer with me out loud, and I want you to pray it with passion, and I want you to pray it from your heart, and God will hear that, and he will respond. Come on, everybody say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus... I need you, and I cannot live without you. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. Set me free from all evil desires and addictions and bondage. Come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Show me your love that I may become a brand new person in Jesus' name. Amen. God, we just celebrate right now. We just thank you, Lord, for anyone right now that just prayed that prayer. And we pray, Lord, as we close out this service in this final prayer, that, Lord, that you will ignite inside of the body of Christ 
a new determination. Enough with the excuses. Enough with the reasons why not. We commit today to starting to get our family and our friends that are lost, that are away from God. We're going to get them in front of you, Jesus. Jesus, you'll do all the other stuff that needs to take place. We're going to get them in front of Jesus. We're going to invite them to the church. We're going to go by their house. We're going to pray for them every day. We're going to get involved in them. Come on, everybody in the church right now. Come on, let's make a prayer of declaration. We're going to start getting the lost people that we love and we care. We're going to start getting them in front of Jesus. Come on, everyone, raise both hands and just begin to pray a prayer of commitment. So as, as, as Pastor Chris comes here right now to the platform to close out this service, we're going to pray right now that in the name of Jesus, we're going to make a new commitment. Father, we make a commitment to you to get our friends in front of Jesus that are lost. And God, we pray for our lost family right now that we are going to make a commitment to, to getting them in front of you Lord enough with excuses God we need to it's critical it's time just like these four friends they determined this was the last day that their friend was going to be paralyzed God there are people in our world that are paralyzed by sin bondage addiction the things of the world that darkness but it is our job to do whatever it takes to get him in front of Jesus come on let's be the church that is an evangelistic church that's reaching the lost let's see empty seats filled let's see altars filled let's see lives touched let's see marriages restored let's see people delivered in Jesus name we ask this Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ron, for the amazing message. Wasn't that so good? Man. The, the call to faithfulness and obedience to the Lord and the call on all of our lives, you know. The, the call to get people in front of Jesus is not just for the professional Christians, not just for me or pastor or pastor ron uh it's for all of us that it's a, it's a mission given to every single one of us and and thank you for that encouragement pastor ron um we want to thank you guys for all uh of the investment that you have done into eagle point both of your time and your energy your your emotional and mental energy and your finances we would not be able to do half even a quarter of the things that we do if it weren't for all of you because of you guys and your faithfulness we we have a, a an impact here at eagle point we have an, a local impact across the city of denton and the dfw area we have a global impact and that's all because of you i, I don't even have time to tell you all of the amazing things that we have been able to be a part of because of you guys so thank you so much and uh, we're doing something a little bit different today uh, with the offering. If you guys feel um, led, uh, Pastor Ron is celebrating an amazing, amazing milestone that Pastor Richard mentioned in his video. Pastor Ron has been in full-time evangelist ministry for 25 years. 25, I'm not even 25 years old. <laughs> uh, 25 years. It, it, it's such an amazing faithfulness that he has displayed so we're going to take up a love offering for him um, you can either uh, do that over text or if you give online um, just designate that to missions and 100 percent of the the missions offering that is given today will go directly to uh, pastor ron and his ministry just as a thank you for not only what he has spoken here today but for his lifetime of faithfulness and ministry so let me pray over offering and then we will go into the last song of worship jesus thank you so much for your word thank you so much for your faithfulness lord that you are so good and kind to us even when we don't deserve it lord we know you are all powerful lord and you none of our problems are too big for you to handle Lord, our addictions and brokenness, our, the pain that we have caused ourselves and others, none of that is too much for you to bear. And so graciously, you invite us to bring those things to you, to surrender them, to stop holding them and to stop hiding them so you can replace them with your love 
your grace, your generosity, your abundance of kindness. Lord, so right now we do that. We, we repent. We come to you humbly saying we can't do it on our own. We need you. We invite you into our hearts and our lives. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Celebrate what you're doing right now. Let's sing this chorus out. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. dismiss. Jesus, thank you so much for your word and your truth. Lord, you are so faithful. Lord, your love awakens us. We were dead in our sin, but because of you, your grace called our name and brought us in to your resurrection life. Lord, help us to leave here changed and with the encouragement and the mission to put people in front of you. Lord, we don't have to uh, do anything else. We don't have to save them or fix them. Lord, that's your job. Allow us to be faithful with the help of your Holy Spirit and help us every day, uh, today, the rest of this week, and the rest of our lives to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. So right now, uh, if you are even or behind that back pillar, the third pillar, you guys are now free to go out of that left-hand door. That is the one that will get you outside. We 